Why are there so many camera settings? I'm confused. Help me. Hi and welcome to episode 100 of the Photography Explained podcast. I'm your host Rick and in each episode I will try to explain one photographic thing to you in plain English in less than 10 minutes-ish without the irrelevant details. What I tell you is based on my lifetime of photographic experience and not Google. 100 episodes and I still can't remember the intro. It's a worry. Anyway, before I go on, I need your help. I need your questions to answer. This is why my podcast exists. So please get in touch with your question and get a shout out from me in a future episode. Just head over to photographyexplainedpodcast.com forward slash start. Okay, thank you. And I really look forward to hearing from you. Yep, episode 100. More on that later. But now I want to get straight into this week's episode. It's not all about me, you know. So here is the answer bit. Camera settings allow photographers to change the way in which the camera takes a photo. After all, we are converting light into digital stuff, so there needs to be some control. (laughs) There needs to be some control over how this happens. Oops. Whilst there seems to be an endless number of camera settings, these can be split into three main groups of settings. Camera settings that you set once in camera and you may never change again. Camera settings that you might change during a shoot, slash taking photos, Camera settings for each specific photo. In this episode, I will start to explain this little lot and tell you how to approach getting on top of the camera settings on your camera. And this is going to take more than one episode, by the way, so bear with me as I break this down into manageable chunks. Don't worry, we'll get there. Okay, that was the longest answer ever. And up to writing this, I was beginning to regret tackling such a broad subject, but I found a way, and that was the bit in the answer. It's it's the breaking it down. Like I said, there are three broad types of camera settings, and this is how I'm going to break this down into three episodes, maybe, maybe more. So in 40-ish minutes, I will have explained camera settings in enough detail to help you with your photography. And for completeness, I will finish off with an episode all about camera settings for beginners. And then I might even do one about the camera settings that I use, and that's all the camera settings I use. Sorted. Right then, I'm quickly going to go through these three types of camera settings. Starting with the ones that you set and leave. Now, these are these are examples, just to, to make a point, really. Firstly, I take photos in RAW. Now, I never change from that. So this is set in camera and never changed. Another example, something I wouldn't change, say, is the noise reduction settings. Well, I could if there was a major problem with noise and I needed to, but that is unlikely. Camera settings that you might change during a shoot. I mean, there are lots of these, and here are some examples. Pitch taking modes or shooting modes. I shoot in AV, but if the lighting got tricky or I needed to do something very specific, I might hop over to manual for a photo. Same with the metering. I might switch from evaluative metering, which is what I use for general shots, to spot metering for a specific thing or situation. Drive mode, I might change from single shot to continuous shooting. And then finally, there are the ones that you set to take a photo. Now, when I say set to take a photo, you might not change these from one photo to another, but equally you might. So what are they? Aperture, shutter, ISO, focal length, focus point. Okay, so it's not that bad, is it, when you break it down? What do I do? Well, if you're worried about all this, let me tell you what I do. And in a future episode, I will expand on this, having written a bit more and thought about it a bit more. Now, I tend to use the same settings for every shoot. So the shooting mode is AV and the aperture, normally F8, which gives me the best quality and the depth of field that I need. Shutter. Now, as I'm taking photos on a tripod, this is determined by the camera. ISO, 100. This is the lowest ISO for the highest quality. Again, I'm taking photos of my camera on a tripod after all, so quality is my priority. Focal length, 17 millimeters. Auto bracketing on, AF on. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, I know there's loads of other camera settings, but those are the main ones. Now, I may change the aperture from F8 to F16 if I need more depth of field. And what does this leave me with? The composition. The composition that I want And the only other variable left is where I focus. So don't worry, this can be as complicated or as simple as you want it to be. And another thing I need to say here, which I'll probably touch on later, the more time you spend learning this stuff, the more time you will save later. So this is well worth getting it all sorted. Okay, 
And having spent all these years learning this stuff, back to my script, I've told you what I do. And it is that simple. Yes, it really is that simple. Okay then, so learn your camera. Whatever your level, whatever your camera, you need to learn how to use it. How to change all the settings and how to set up the camera so it works at its best for you. See, yes, that's you and me. We both need to learn how to use our cameras properly. Okay, straight into the talky bit this episode. There seem to be an endless number of camera settings and it can appear daunting. I completely get that. Don't worry, what we need is a plan to get through all of this and this is it. Okay, firstly, you can download most manufacturers' camera manuals these days as PDFs, which is dead handy as you can have them with you on your device and they should be searchable too. See, when I started off, you were given this little booklet um, with several hundred pages in it and it took an age to find anything, but searchable PDFs have changed that significantly. So if you haven't got it, get the manual for your camera. And if you want to, get a book about how to use your camera. I have one book from a Canon 6D. Check out the content and reviews of the books and buy the best book that you can. With the previous camera, I bought three books thinking, now I've bought all these books, I'm going to be the best photographer ever. Problem was, I didn't read them. So, um, bit of a waste of time and effort, wasn't it? So that's why I say, just get one book and work through it. It should be enough for you. So then you need to get your camera, your manual, your book if you have one. Find a quiet place where you have some uninterrupted time and do this. Go through the camera manufacturer's manual from start to end. And while you're doing that, change the settings on the camera as you work through them. And also take photos and see what these settings do. This, of course, is the beauty of digital photography. You can take as many photos as you want and it doesn't cost you anything. Okay, really? Have I done this? Yes, I really have done this. I mean, in the past, I, I've just taken the camera out of the box and started using it. And would you believe one camera I did this? And I was quite frankly, I was disappointed with the results. So what did I do? I bought another camera. Ridiculous. What was I thinking? But fortunately, you can learn from my stupidity. So, But when I bought my Canon 6D, I went through the manual and I really did go through the manual. And then I went through the book. And then I went back to the manual and um, it was interesting. Very, very good learning. I now have a PDF version of the manual with me wherever I go on my phone. Now, if you think about all this, it just makes perfect sense, doesn't it? A camera is a major investment. It's a lot of money. And if you want to get into photography, it's your major tool, isn't it? So why wouldn't you learn how to use it properly? No logic to not doing this. And why did I spend over a £1,000 on a camera and not take the time to learn how to use it properly? I have no idea what I was thinking. So again, what you need to do is learn what the camera settings are on the camera, what they do, how they change the photos that you take, and which are the settings that you need for your photography. Now, you need to do this once so you can get your camera set up for you. And sure, refer back to the manual in the book if you want to at any time in the future. But it's about getting your camera set up for you. And the other thing that you need to do, go out and take photos. Get your camera set up and go out and use it. Take photos, see what results you get. And if you need to change something, then fine, do that. But taking photos, consciously practicing and learning, and of course, looking at your photos and seeing what, you will, what you're getting, easy for me to say, will quickly get your photography to another level. And also, you get to the point where the camera settings are no longer a worry because you get to a point where it's all dialed in. OK, so this is about making your camera work for you. And only you can make those settings and change them. Right then, so episode 100. Wow, I've made it. Now, I started my podcast. Yeah, sorry, this is the bit about me now. I started my podcast in October 2020, and I've managed to get one episode a week published since I started, which I'm actually really pleased with. Now, I did have a phase of two episodes a week, but I went back down to one episode a week. I couldn't keep it going. So here I am now, sat recording episode 100. And going forwards, I'm focusing on the quality of the content and the quality of the production. And I'm also trying to inject a bit more me into my episodes and a bit more fun. And I've got lots of other stuff coming up, which I'm very excited about. Blimey, this is going to be a quick episode. I wasn't expecting that. Okay, then. So related episodes. Well, to be honest with you, loads of episodes relate to what I've talked about in this episode. So just check out Photography Explained Podcast website. That's photographyexplainedpodcast.com. Thank you. Where you will find the full list of episodes. Talking of episodes, what's in the next episode? Photography Explained Podcast episode 101. 
<laughs> no, I'm not going to call it Photography 101, although I am tempted. Shall I? I think I will, yeah. Why not? Let's see what happens. But in the next episode of my podcast, whatever I call it, is... I've just seen an error with this. Camera settings 1, things that you can set and forget. Shouldn't that be camera settings 2? Oh, I don't know. It doesn't really matter, does it? I do get a bit hung up on irrelevant details like this, which I shouldn't do. Shout out time. Well, send me a question and when I answer it, I'll give you a shout out. But until somebody does that, the shout out is to me and my course. Find out more about my course, How to Become a Real Estate Photographer, at rickmacavoyphotography.com forward slash courses. As I like to say, if I can't promote myself here, where can I? Okay, I'm done. Thanks for listening to my small but perfectly formed podcast. To find out more about my podcast and do stuff to help me, check out photographyexplainedpodcast.com forward slash start. Brought to you by... Well, this episode was brought to you by water. Lots of lovely water. I've been Rick McAvoy. Thanks again very much for listening to me and for giving me just over 12 and three quarter minutes. Yay, I've made the target of your valuable time. And I will see you on the next episode. Cheers from me, Rick. For those of you wondering what I'm talking about there, the vast majority of the episodes last 12 minutes, 45 seconds. Obviously, this one's gone a bit longer now with the additional explanation, but I'm going to shut up now.